people that live down here that are down in Skid Row because they're down and out or they have a bad family situation or something, they're thankful that we're here protecting. Definitely not saying we're harassing. Yeah, well, see, I thought when they got there, they, when they said they was going to build up the uh, gang, I mean the uh, police units, I thought they were going to do something and deploy some of those police officers to the gang unit. But it looks like they all 50 are still right in this area harassing the homeless people. You know, bothering us, you know, harassing us every day. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah, I want you to understand. When I, before I was arrested, I was at the Russ Hotel. I had my own room. I was waiting for my license. I was waiting for this building down here. Get started and put my, all my, they were supposed to get my merchandise and put right here in this warehouse. I had everything going for me. You know? I came up with, then, then this, because I was arrested, was sitting on this crate, which I think that they could have, they could have uh, OR'd me or what they know I had my own place. That I lost my room. I lost everything I owned that was in there, all my expensive things. I lost all of that. I had a confrontation, an argument with my manager over volunteer work for Thanksgiving. After our argument, we went out both ways. Next thing you know, I had police at my door. <clears throat> I answered the door. They asked me what's going on. I said, my manager and I just had an argument. No big deal. She went her way, I went my way. After that, um, they asked me, what, where's the knife? I said, what knife? There's no knife involved. They said, step out. I said, wait a minute, let me get my license. I grabbed my license off my desk, went to show my license. They grabbed me by the arm and pulled me out, pushed me to the ground, and handcuffed me. This, uh, this to me doesn't make any sense. Why arrest people sitting on the crate and take my, take my home from me? They'll they put me in jail and bring me back, get out of jail and come back out here again. You say you want to help the homeless and you want them to have a place to stay, but you took me a place from me. Now I'm back out here. Same place. It's the only place I feel safe. So I got to the station. They cuffed me to a, a bench approximately two or three hours. Within that two or three hours, still no answer. They got my name. They didn't... Uh, Filed charges on me with no knife. They didn't book me for nothing. They decided to ship me off to a hospital for 72 hours watch. Well, I got shipped to the hospital. I was there approximately two and a half, three hours. And they gave me, come on, gave me to two tokens and told me to go home. There was nothing wrong with me. Uh, I had bruises on me from the, uh, the officers manhandling me. which I shouldn't have sustained. Okay, on my leg, my right uh, leg, my arms, from the handcuffs being so tight. I tell you one thing, it feels like a communist country and I'm living in America, too many police. Police stopping you and, and they, the jackers is the police. The police is the danger. The way they, you know, their procedures of just jumping out, just jumping out the car and just, just you know, searching you, going in your clothes, you feel, you feel like you're in a communist country, you can't do that no more. The legal system is for the rich and not the poor. If you have no money to get you an attorney, they can swindle and deal and, man, and fandangle, you got nothing coming. A person such as myself, where I can't, I have to take, take a, a, um, cases and not even mine. I have to take, this stuff It's not even mine. Oh uh, well, if, if, if I can't fight it, what can I do? I ain't got no money to fight it. If I had a little money to fight it, they wouldn't have me in there. I mean, come on, that's a, it's a crate. I leave here every day. I you try leave to, here. Yeah, I leave? try to. I try to go somewhere out of this immediate downtown Skid Row area to get away from the police. <laughs> I've had to move because of um, this incident. I'm afraid for my life. I just basically realized, you know, it's just going to be a rough scene around here, and. Uh, is either uh, find a way to, to fit in with it or, or lead the area. I could 
completely. I, you know, I get the hint, you know. Uh, they got people moving in with money. The property's hot again. And, you know, just people hanging out. That's, that's not where it's at. So, I don't know what's going to happen. You know, they don't have a place for people to live. But they want you to leave, so I don't know what they're going to do, you know. Just lock everybody up, I guess. Well, somebody needs to do something. We need help down here. We need the relief from these cops doing what they're doing. They sitting up there, and each time they, they got somebody against the wall, they laugh. They enjoying this. They enjoying this. They laugh and talking to each other about what they did last night, why they got you handcuffed against the wall. I've seen them do that a million times to people. That ain't, that ain't, this ain't no joke. The people that live down here, that are down in Skid Row because they're down and out, or they bad family situation or something, they're thankful that we're here protecting. Definitely not saying we're harassing. So is there anything else you'd like to say before we close out? Yeah, it's just that, uh, you know, if, if anything I said in this film can make it so that, uh, you know, people don't have to just get locked up and just sitting there and sitting there for no reason at all, then I'm, I'm glad I... Uh,